Hey y'all, it's Christy from Tea Dottles, and today I just wanted to give you a quick, some quick tips on starting your seam on the chalet. I had a question yesterday on my, or today, on one of my, my last video about sewing with uh, chalet fabric, and it was how to, how I get to do the eighth of an inch seam because I'm doing French seams without my machine eating it, okay? And this can be a problem even if you're not doing eighth of an inch seams. Um, it, typically, it's only a problem if this is in the center of your presser foot. That's when it becomes a problem, right? And when you try to start that, it so, wants to suck in that corner. Believe me, I've had that happen plenty of times until I finally learned <laughs> how to stop it. So I will share that with you. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lower this presser foot. And I make sure my fabric is, this is this little gap here get something to point with and maybe we can zoom in on this and see if that makes it easier to see sorry for the shaking y'all this is not the best setup for this camera but this little gap here is where the needle goes down so I'm making sure my fabric is in that gap uh, so that when my needle starts it starts in the fabric it's not starting oh in front of the fabric which sometimes you do Especially if you're doing a back seam and you want to go over the end real good. But with this type of fabric, you, you really you just don't do that. Make sure the fabric is, even if the edge of it is even with the back side of this. That's that's what I have. And then there's a line on the center of my foot. This my eighth of an inch. Uh, different machines will be marked differently for eighth of an inch. Or you may have to mark it yourself. So, and the other thing is to make sure your bobbin thread is up. My blue thread is the bobbin thread the white thread is the top thread um, on my machine when I put a new bobbin in it cuts the thread and it just pulls the bobbin up out automatically so I don't have to have it up but if I'm starting something like this I try to make sure it is up so I can grab a hold of it like this and this just gives you a little bit of control over where that's starting at so this is you're gonna want to hold on to that before you start so um, my other thing is when I'm doing this, I use pins. I use smaller, sharper pins for something. Let's see if I can get this up under here. These type of pins. I'll try to put a link down below if I remember. But um, I always pin all of this when I'm sewing with this type of fabric because it will go every which way if you don't. And that just gives you a little bit more control <laughs> over this type of fabric. This one's not quite as bad as some of them that are shiny surfaced. Those are really ones that, that tend to move around a lot. Little pins are the best, your best option. And they just go through the fabric easier and keep from snags. The same as uh, using a Microtex needle for my sewing. So once I get my fabric placed, I'm going to hold this. I'm going to hold it taunt. I'm not pulling on it. I'm just holding it taunt, okay? And uh, you just slowly start. And then there you go. Once you get started, you can speed up a little bit. Okay? And that will help keep your uh, end from going down in that throat <laughs> like you don't like. Okay? Um, another tip is if you have a piece of scrap fabric. Let me zoom back out right quick. If you have a piece of scrap fabric, sew onto this first and then lay your, and then put your uh, other fabric on top of it. It's going to seem like you're sewing it together, but you can pull it, you can take it apart with a, a seam ripper. That will help keep it from going in the throat too, if you still have trouble with it. But um, I don't like having to cut things off the end. Um, there's some fabrics I've had to use this on because it just would not do what I wanted it to. But you basically, you would lay it back here and you sew over it first and then you let it pull in your other fabric. So then you don't have that end that wants to suck down in the, in there i don't back stitch on eighth of an inch seams um i feel like i may have said this already but i've had to redo this video several times so i'm gonna say it again just in case i haven't um because eighth of an inch seams on garments are typically only for uh, like i'm doing the french seam and it'll be hidden with another seam that i can back stitch on and uh under stitching is the only time i usually use it i did use it on the My interfacing edge. Oh, 
don't do that, Christy. My interfacing edge, I used, uh, this is a little more than an eighth of an inch. Um, just where I had to turn that under, uh, I still got to stitch that down, my interfacing. Uh, but I'm not going to do that until I change my top stitch. So, And another tip for interfacing, uh, if I had had it because I'm out, I would have used seam tape. Because I don't have to worry about turning those edges under and cutting another piece of fabric. And it finishes the edge just fine. Which I will do a video about that one day. Um, interfacing. <laughs> That's how I feel about interfacing. <laughs> Alright. So, like I said, this is just a little quick video. To kind of make up for my Maker Friday that I missed yesterday. So, we have Maker Friday on a Saturday. Um, but I hope that that is helpful. And that it answers your question about how to start those eighth of an inch seams and uh, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about when you're saying it's eating your fabric um, and if that's not it or if anybody has any other questions please just let me know I'm happy to help where I can so y'all have a fabulous day and uh, remember to have a life lived creatively and I will see y'all in the next video bye